Thank you for coming this afternoon. My name is Laura, and I'm the dietitian here for the Bariatric Center. This is my great friend and dietitian, Steph Wapner. She's the bariatric dietitian for the state of back in. Oh, I was in um, Oklahoma, Kansas. Oklahoma, Kansas. Mm -hmm. So she has developed a, um, a site for you guys and for all the bariatric patients that has to do with meal planning. And I, you know, I think that's like an amazing tool for you guys. Um, it's very easy to use. I think she's done a fantastic job. Everything is just meant for bariatric patients, which is very different from any other resources that you see out there. And she has put it all together very well for you guys. She's always, uh, she's also um, has created a recipe book for bariatric patients, and it's called Best Pork Forward. You can look at, um, you can find it on her website. You can find it at Amazon and she might talk a little bit more about it and i just thrilled to have her here today for you i think she's a, an amazing resource for all of you there you that go. was a wonderful introduction <laughs> <laughs> that was so um well thank you for having me laura i i love support groups um so i've been working in bariatric surgery for maybe eight years for three different clinics and that's always been my favorite part it's my favorite part because Hopefully, if I do it right, it's a great time for you to engage with each other. So the less I talk and the more you guys get to talk with each other, the better I feel. Uh, so, so I'll talk more about my website and my cookbook in a little bit, but I would love to just jump into our topic and some discussion. Uh, so with that in mind, I'm going to do kind of a survey of the room, so like a show of hands. And this won't necessarily be on the video. And a wink to whoever's watching, um, but um, but we'll 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 go from there. So, um, quick show of hands. Let's start with kind of the classic question: Who is a pre-op patient on their way to surgery? On the road to surgery. Awesome. We're excited for you. anyone have a surgery date. That's okay. Working towards it. I always have to ask though, because once you get that date, you can't wait to shout it. So I have to ask. And then post ops. I love it. I think I, this is the first time I've ever been to a support group in the afternoon and certainly one that's so well attended and with so many post-offs. So thank you for being here. I know that's kind of the cliche things to say thank you for being here, but truly I know that there are so many barriers that come in your life about getting to a support group and whether they're mental or emotional or you know physical and schedule. So I think it's such a great investment in your health and your journey um, and that's why I like for you to get the time with each other. So, another uh, show of hands, who does the meal planning and grocery shopping for their family or in their house? Oh, yeah, and it's a lot. Um, and let's see, so who is cooking for one or two? Okay, so we're gonna talk about, and yeah, depends on the day and who's around. Yeah, exactly, we've got a so-so a, a over here. Who's cooking for an army? Uh-huh, we got those two. It depends on the day and who's around, right? Because uh, sometimes you can pull your food from what they're having, and sometimes you're like, okay, I've got to protect this with everything I have. Um, so that's kind of the survey question. So this is where I'm going to do a little bit more open discussion. But who feels they have a good system when it comes to meal planning? <laughs> I didn't even get a so so. There wasn't even a eh. because it's it's a hard area of life, and I, I, there's so many things in our life that we have to manage. We have to manage our money. We have to manage our time. We have to manage relationships, and we have to manage our food life. But we never think about it that way, even though we have to eat every day, right? We think about all these other things we need to do, but. What, it, what tends to happen with our meal planning is more of a fly by the seat of your pants kind of style. Anyone else flying by the seat of their pants? Mm -hmm. Here's a follow-up question. Does anyone know what they're having for dinner tonight? Hey, we got a, yeah, we got a couple, yeah. I have a crock pot meal at home right now, so I, I get to raise my hand this time. So it sounds like this is a good topic for us, is how is this working for, for everyone? Um, Let's see, I mean, I'll talk the whole time if needed, but I'm going to see if I can get some discussion stirred up. So who prefers one big once a month shopping trip to Costco and getting it all done? And does that work pretty well for you? 
We got another so-so. It has worked for you? It has to. It has to. Because that's, you know, like, that's your option. Yep, exactly. And you're going to segue me nicely because sometimes the season of life is what dictates our approach to grocery shopping. Absolutely. Uh, who's more of like a once a week? Like I shop once a week. We've got a couple once a weekers. So what's your grocery shopping day? It just depends. Depends. This is just a fun fact, but did you know, do you know what day statistically is the best for grocery shopping in terms of deals and selection? Wednesdays. Wednesdays, you got it. Double coupon day, they usually restock on Tuesday nights, so if your schedule allows for Wednesday, that's typically the best time to do it, which makes, what, Tuesday night the worst. <laughs> Everything's picked over and there's no deals. Uh, okay, so who tends to like show up to the grocery store every couple days, grab what they need, and just kind of go as, yeah, you kind of walk in the door. Yep. Who walks in with a grocery list? All right, there's a lot of grocery listers. So who's just walking in and it's, it's all in their head? Mm -hmm. And is anyone using phone apps? For, so we got some, what, what app? <laughs> So you pull up Pinterest in the grocery? If not, my daughter will do it, and then she'll tell me what to get. That's it. So you, so you pull up Pinterest itself. Any other apps? I use, Anytime. I use Pinterest. What's it called? It's called Anytime. Anytime you can list. Find out like my Target, Price Chopper, all these. So they'll tell you which one's the best deal. Also, see that's the next cool feature about grocery shopping is is how we can leverage technology. Has anyone? used online grocery shopping it is currently my jam i am an online grocery shopper it, the, the pre-planned or, or the meal things where you can pick the mail and they ship it to you is that, that what you're i haven't about? done that yet they have they have those meals out there and i've, I've been interested in them but there's they seem you know big portions yeah and sometimes and it's hard to stuff. pick and yeah. pick and choose your ingredients <laughs> yeah yeah I, I haven't done that yet um what i guess what i you're right i could probably word it funny um but the pick up where you can order your groceries and, and schedule that haven't picked up okay has anyone done the grocery pickup i think hy -Vee does that and maybe price shopper too but it, you have to have a minimum so i've been not to give this shameless plug but kind of the season of life I'm in because I think it's been helpful for me so it might be helpful for some of you and may not for everyone but I have a 16 month old and I love grocery shopping but not with my 16 month old <laughs> she's a ton of fun but keeping her contained in the shopping cart is really difficult so what I do is I do a once a month um, I do Sam's Club because I still have to figure out Costco um, that's my <laughs> Unless this membership's up, I gotta go to Costco. Uh, but I do once a month, I go to Sam's Club and I get a ton of the bulk, typical items. Cheese sticks, for example, deli meat, some of those things that like I just know we're gonna get, go through. Uh, then I have been using, I don't normally enjoy shopping at Walmart, but their pickup process has been awesome. It's a $30 minimum, and I have my phone app, and so if I'm in the playroom with my daughter, I can add things to my grocery cart from the app. And so if we run out of something, I put it on right there. Oh, she's giving me the, the shimmy. There we go. There we go. Um, they're going to have half my face. So, um, so then on, I do my um, meal planning on Tuesday evenings, and that's just worked for me. So on Tuesday evenings, I sit down to Pinterest, and I go and look for recipes figure out what, you know, I look at my calendar for the week ahead, what nights do I need a slow cooker meal or do I need extras because we need leftovers. And then I schedule my pickup for Wednesday and I check out. And then on Wednesday, whenever I leave my house, I go to my app and I click that I'm on my way. And when I get there, they're waiting with my groceries and they load it into my car. It you take is, them home with you? And then, yeah. That's the part I hate the most. Yeah, unloading. Yeah, and that's the other thing I do is that I'm, for Wednesday night dinners, I always get a pre-cooked, yeah, I get like a pre-made salad or pre-made meat like Paulette was passing around. Because after after you get to the grocery store and you do all the checking out, you unload all the groceries, what's the last thing you want to do? Cook. Cook, yeah, you're like, okay, what are we doing for dinner? You've got all these groceries, what are we gonna eat? So that's, yeah, I usually do a pre-made something for Wednesday. So. 
Anyway, that may work for you. You may enjoy walking around the store and seeing what new products are going on, what's on sale, getting new ideas. I think certainly earlier in your journey, you're just trying to figure out what, what else is out there. Or you get food fatigue and you're stuck in a rut and you're like, I need a new idea. Um, so sometimes it does help to go to the store. I enjoy going to the store. But that's, what, that's the season I'm in, is leveraging technology to make these meal plans work. So, um, What else? Normally, I have a system, but I have no system today. Uh, where do you go for our recipes? I am online all the time. Yeah, I have. Yeah, Facebook. Absolutely. Uh, okay, Facebook. Do you search on Facebook for a recipe, or just in your feed? It just it goes in my feed, and then if I see one that the couple that I like, I download that website, like spin spin pennies. So you'll click through, find the website, and then save it or print it or download it or something like that. Yeah. So Facebook, and then we talked about Pinterest. Never pin when you're hungry, right? It's like don't go shopping hungry. Don't go to Pinterest if you're hungry, unless you have really good blinders on. What else? Anyone else have their kind of go-tos for recipes? Uh, Whole30. Yeah. Just Is that just the website is Whole30 or, or just Whole30, the Whole30? It's just the, the style? plan. It's paleo, mm -hmm. and it's got a lot of great recipes. Yeah. So you just do you just Google things that that I'll, have whole thirty I'll say a whole thirty chicken recipe. Yeah. Or stuff with sun dried tomatoes. Or. So I like that. She's really leveraging keywords. So she goes to Google and she's like, I, I want to get more specific. I'm so tired of chicken. I want to find bariatric turkey recipe. You know, beef recipes, burger recipes. So she's getting more and more specific. I see a hand. Um, we had some major good recipes in my family that's been in my family forever and I just recently started going through those and making some changes that yeah. are more bariatric friendly and Perfect. it amazes me how, uh, how successful that can be. Tell us more, so what sort of things have you tweaked that weren't as hard as you thought? Well just kind of some of the things that we already knew and forgot like uh, instead, of, instead of sour cream Back there with the microphone. The whole thing, or just yeah. <laughs> okay, family recipes that have been incredible through the years, and I've just been recently going through and making some changes to them so they're more bariatric friendly. And one of them is like the we all know this about you know instead of um, sour cream, you see like a low fat or a no fat yogurt. Um, you know, seeing things like that, just changing the ingredients to some of those. It doesn't really alter the flavor. That's what really surprised me. It doesn't alter the flavor of the recipes, but it can make a huge difference in, you know, like how much carbs and things you're getting. Yes. I, that's such great feedback. Kind of those simple swaps. Uh, one of my favorite, if you haven't tried it, is instead of breadcrumbs and a meatloaf or burgers or anything, I always use grated non-fat or reduced fat grated Parmesan cheese because it's still the binder, like a breadcrumb. I love meatloaf. I think I, my recipe has like 12 different meatloaf recipes because I've always loved them. And that's my go-to swap. Yeah, you have another one. Yeah, another thing that I do um, sometimes is I'll, if I'm gonna be using cheese. Oh, She's gonna get you back on the <laughs> mind, that's right. Sometimes if I'm gonna be using cheese, and I'll, of course I'll do the low-fat cheese, but I've learned that if I kind of, if it's a recipe where I can, I might cook the cheese down some first and it separates more oil out of there that I can pour off. Kind of plot it off, mm -hmm. and yeah. yeah. Okay. I love that. that. That's like the bariatric hacks. Uh, you know, we're like, here's the newest hack. Yeah, I see a hand here. Parmesan? Yeah, the, the reduced fat grated Parmesan, just like the green can that you think of. So, and I, it's a, just an exact substitution. If something calls for a half a cup of breadcrumbs, I do a half a cup of reduced fat Parmesan cheese, and I've done, I use, that's one thing that I do buy in bulk. I use a lot of the reduced fat, grated Parmesan cheese for texture, for crisp, for I put it on their eggs, lots of different things like that. So uh, I'm trying to think if there's any other. Um, I have lots of those simple swaps. I think that's a great suggestion. It's just going back to the recipes you have and saying, well, if I omit that and I tweak that, I think it still work because 
you know, the bariatric diet, we're focused on lean meats, non-starchy vegetables. The flavors come in the spices, the veggies, so we can get creative with the flavors, but a lot of the starches, the breads, pasta, rice, potatoes, that's not really where the flavor is, typically. So we can usually omit those without changing the meal itself, except if it's something that's baked and it needs texture, and that's where you could use like a Parmesan cheese or egg or something that will bind it a little bit more. Anything? Yeah, Paulette. On um, those uh, roasted chickens that they sell them at um, supermarkets, Sam's Club. Like a rotisserie chicken? Yeah, $4.99, yep. and yep. you can make so many meals out of that throughout the week. Chicken salad, yeah. chicken with some green beans, yeah. and some Low sugar marinara the one day, is, salsa as soon as the next day. You get day. it home and it's warm, then you get all that skin off and you get, get everything. Pull all the fat but, off. Yeah, absolutely. The fat and then get it in a container. That's one of the things I'll do a lot for Wednesday nights when I'm like, I know I don't want to cook on a grocery shopping day. I'll get a rotisserie chicken and some green beans. That's a really good one. Well, I have a couple showing. Any other comments before I move from grocery shop? Okay, so we all we can all agree that finding a system is. Um, is the most important thing is just finding a routine and maybe for you it's just going you know getting three days worth of groceries at one time or maybe you're kind of looking at things and you're like you know maybe I need to reevaluate how I am handling this area of my life um, we aren't going to get into family dynamics today but another time I'm going to come we're, we're going to talk about family dynamics because that's a whole other area um, if you do have others in your house and you're doing the grocery shopping and you've got opinions you have big eaters and uh, but I've noticed when I went from single and cooking for one, I had, I had a great routine, a great system. I got married and my system exploded. It was not working. <laughs> and I feel like next to, probably next to money, the number two most talked about thing in my marriage is food. You know, what are we going to eat? When, are you, when is dinner? When are we going to cook it? When are you shopping? Will you get this? I just feel like it's like a constant conversation. Um, so that's a whole other dynamic is keeping those communication lines open uh, so that the family is all on board when it comes to food management. Uh, okay, so a couple of show and tell items. Now I want to talk more about when you're, when you're trying to make more single serving, small portions. Because if you haven't said it yourself, you've heard it said before, I don't want to spend all this time cooking when it's just for me. Anybody said that? We got a lot of head nods. Why would I spend all that time, all those dishes, all that waste if it's just me. So um, these are things that I have found worked really well. I also have members to my site have a closed Facebook group, and these are a lot of things that they're sharing that work really well for them. Uh, one of my favorite, has anyone used a muffin pan for smaller? What have you made in your muffin pan? Um, I've made like mini meatloaves. Yes, like mini meatloaves. Some, uh, like the egg cups? Woman after my own heart, exactly. So I do the exact same things. I use um, a muffin pan, and I specifically use a silicone muffin pan. This is $11 on Amazon, and I use it all the time because it pops things out so easily, uh, pretty easy to clean up. I've done the mini meatloaf, and you can, like I said, I have 12 different recipes of meatloaf, so I'm making a lot of mini meatloafs, but they freeze surprisingly well. Have you frozen them, and then re how do you reheat them? Microwave or yeah, oven? Microwave. Yeah, the microwave works great. So I've done lots of mini meatloafs. One of my favorite is I make a big batch of chili, and then I scoop my chili into the wells of the muffin pan, and I put it in the freezer for maybe 20 or 30 minutes, so it's not rock hard, but it's pretty solid and then I pop it into a gallon freezer bag. And then you just have chunks of chili that you can take out as you need it. I like that. Isn't that awesome? Muffin pans, y'all, the silicone muffin pan, $11, and then you don't feel like you have all that waste. Great for lunches, great for dinners. Same thing, meatloafs, put them in a gallon Ziploc bag and you can free them. Um, and chili, I mean, how many ways can you make chili? Chicken chili, turkey chili, um, barbecue chili, Italian chili, there's so many ways. So that's a great way to get protein and creativity, yeah. How many ounces is one of those? I think it depends on how you scoop it, um, how, how much you fill it. So I believe that this is a half cup portion. I'm sure if you okay. went to Amazon, it would tell you. So if you wanted to, you well, know, you pack could pour it down. water in it and figure that out. Exactly, right. yeah, you could, exactly. I'll do it right now. There you go. Oh. We're gonna take care of that for you. And then a follow up to that, kind of on that same style, is uh, specifically food containers that are, these are three quarter cup 
uh, food containers. This has been, in our Facebook group, this is the most popular brand. Um, they're BPA free, you can freeze them, you can microwave them, you can dishwash them. Don't put them in the oven. Oh, what brand is that? This is called, oh, we can pass this around, this is, I don't know how to say it, Elacra, E-L-A-C-R-A. Uh, but they are, I think I have one that's already taken out. Um, they have those really good snap down lids and what a lot of uh, patients do with these is they make their recipe, their family recipe or a Pinterest recipe just as it's called for. They don't adapt it, they don't cut it down, they just make it as it's called for. But then they just cut it down and fill it into these containers and then freeze them. So you know, typically meals like that are good in a freezer for six months. Uh, and then usually you can do a microwave. Sometimes I just prefer using the oven because it feels like I've made a meal, <laughs> which I did five months ago. Um, or um, the stove, like with the chili, I like to, to go ahead and heat the chili in a soft saucepan over the stove top just because I feel like it's a little bit more even, but it's really easy to pop it out, put it on a saucepan. So that one's three quarter cups. You can pass that around if you'd like. They're four ounces. Four ounce, there you go. And of course, if it bakes, it might be a little less. I don't know. That one, I don't know if you need to pass that around necessarily, but this here's more heavy duty than mine. I have silicone. You have silicone, it's always different. Put them, uh, it's not as um, heavy duty as that, but I always put a cookie sheet under it. Yeah. She puts a cookie sheet under her. So that, I don't know the brand of that one, but if you just go to Amazon and search silicone method, yeah, you probably see it. When you put it, it in the oven, it's kind of collapsing. Right, you're yeah, like, I don't want to have hot meatloaf all over me. Yeah. Uh, another great single serving is, believe it or not, a cookie scoop. Uh, and I use this a lot for my muffin pan. It's all, that's what I'm using to put things into the muffin pan. But I do these a lot with meatballs. Make a big tray meat. And I've also used a mini muffin pan for my meatballs. You can see a theme here. <laughs> so this, uh, this one in particular is from Pampered Chef. But they come in different sizes. Um, so you could... <coughs> I, this one's just called a medium, but we could do the same thing and measure it. But you can, there's small, medium, and large on a cookie scoop, and that would be another way to scoop out smaller portions. Um, basic kitchen shears, I use, I use kitchen shears every day. Uh, for one, I use it to trim the fat off any meat, but I love these for small bite sizes, because as you know, it is so important to take those small bites, go slowly so your food doesn't back up, so that your meat fits comfortably, so you don't have that premature fullness where you think you're full and then an hour later you're hungry again. Anybody relate to that? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Whoop. Guess I'll be back in an hour for that meal. So I love these because I, I tend to chop my meat up a lot of times, not all the time, but a lot of times I will chop it up before I cook it because it cooks so much faster, for one. You know, I don't have to wait for a chicken breast this thick to cook. I can chop it all down into my small sizes put it in the skillet, it's gonna cook that much faster. It's easier to put it in my containers to eat for later, but it also keeps you on track for those small bite sizes because they're already small. So I, this is what I do for my 16 month old that needs to, take, needs to take smaller bites is I use kitchen shears. So she eats what we're eating, I just chop it up with scissors. So I think to myself all the time, that's great for post ops. Good old kitchen shears. Uh, last thing and then I will jump on and show you my website. Uh, and this is specific with Pampered Chef just because I really like them. I'm sure there's other companies that have something similar. Um, and you can't, you can't see it. I didn't want to bring in my whole baker. And this picture didn't print off that great. Well, you can pass this around. This is called a round covered baker. Uh, and it's a microwave friendly meat cooker. Uh, so it's a stoneware. And this one, the rock, the rock. they have a rock crock. That one's pretty big. I have that one too. And they have a smaller one? Yeah. That must be new, okay. So same idea, small baker, or what she's saying is the rock crock, because the rock crock can go from oven, stove top to oven to microwave, yeah. Right. And this one can just do oven and microwave, but the rock, rock crock can go on the oven. Um, anyway, I'm not selling Pampered Chef, I just happen to know a lot about them. Uh, but anything like that where you can do a microwave meal that's still a home-cooked meal. Uh, so this, this one in particular, it's, um, it's made to fit two servings, so you can cook two chicken breasts in your cooker and in the microwave. So I do this a lot with chicken. You can do it with chicken. I've done it with the pre-seasoned pork tenderloin. We'll get a small tenderloin and then I'll put it in the microwave for 13 minutes and it's moist and perfect. Um, 
I do it a lot with chicken if I'm going to make a chicken salad or anything that calls for pre-cooked chicken. You ever look at a recipe and you're like, well, now I know that I have to go backwards and cook the chicken before I can even start this recipe. So that's what I use this a lot for. Sometimes I'll just do salt, pepper, chicken in the microwave in you know, 12 to 15 minutes and it's cooked and then I'll use my kitchen shears, chop it up. Uh, you get the idea. So this one, this uh, list price is $53. Uh, but like I said, just something like that for, for single servings is really nice. I'll pass that around. Any other kitchen tools or equipment that you like, Paula? Um, I can't chef, and I don't sell it either. I know. But, um, it's, it's, it's a, a salad thing. chopper. Oh, I love and those. And it's just like shears, but you can use it for meat. I use and it all the time. And put it in that bowl, and you go just like scissors, but it's it's um, kind of Scooby. more substantial than a pair of scissors. Yeah, it's like a pair of scissors that has two side-by-side -side blades. And then it has kind of a scoop at the bottom. So if you're going to go, like I do it a lot with that pork tenderloin. I'll get like the lemon pepper ten pork tenderloin, cook it in the microwave for 10 minutes. And then I'll go through with these choppers and it chops your meat really fast. Yeah, I've done. those are 12 or 15 dollars. So I guess we need a paper check. Yeah. Uh, if, the, if one were here, they'd be very happy to see this. Yes, thank you. Okay, well I'm going to hop around and show you just real quick. Um, uh-oh, I don't know a password. <laughs> we'll figure that out. Um, so, my husband's a web developer. And that's what happens when you have a web developer in the family. Um, together we created a website that's specifically for bariatric nutrition. Um, so I've been doing this for maybe four years now. And, um, and so it's a, it's a lot of fun. I really enjoy it. And um, there's tons of free content on here, recipes. There's tons of free recipes. And I'll show you on here uh, where you can find that. It's called foodcoach.me. Here we go. And if we go over to the recipes tab, there's, a, there's over 500 recipes on here now, um, and anything that does not have a pink border to it is all free content. Um, so you'll see there's a lot on there. There's some that's more the soft or the liquid for pre-ops or early post-ops, uh, but then you can also go over up here, there's different parameters. So if you're looking specifically for slow cooker, it'll pull up just slow cooker meals. If you ever come across a picture that has a pink border on it, those are locked for members to the website. And membership, the first two weeks are free to see if it's a good fit for you. After that, it's just $10 a month. Uh, you can cancel at any time. So there you go, there's the pink one. So you would know when you're into a membership recipe. Um, and I'm gonna sign in. So members to this site have access to a meal planner app. I think it might just be my name. And you can cater the meals to be however many servings you want. So if you only want to cook two servings, because that's the other thing you can do for single servings is you might take one pound of ground turkey and split it to two different recipes so that you don't get tired of the same thing. So maybe you make a turkey taco meat and put it on a bed of spinach with this and then this other one you make a marinara meat sauce and put it with green beans just so that you're not getting tired of the same stuff oh, that's going to take me to my side that's not the fun side okay So down here is the meal planner. So it has this drop down. You can pick whether you just want an A to Z, if you want it to list by breakfast, lunch, dinner, if you want it to list by cuisine, meaning Asian, Italian, American. And then when you click on that, it'll have a long list of recipes. And you can decide, OK, I'm going to try this Italian sausage turkey burger. And it comes up underneath that drop down and you can drag and drop it into your calendar. 
and then you can click on the recipe and instead of six servings you only want two and then you can generate your shopping list you can add whether you want more days or less days you can do less and then you have to pick either if you want US Imperial or metric you want US Imperial I think the developers lived in New Zealand um, so anyway so there and then from there you can edit the list you can print it off and add it by hand you can pull it up by your phone um, it's uh, the feedback has been that it's definitely helpful and that it could certainly be more user-friendly so what I like about it we have this um, there's a developer that created that meal planner and it's gotten better and better. So what I really like about it is that the developer is certainly working on it rather than like they made it and moved on. So, um, but everyone says it definitely serves its purpose, but hopefully we'll see it uh, get better and better. So there's that and then also courses are just video courses. There's a cooking for one video course, back on track video course, um, kind of more lesson format on video so there's that and then I do have cookbooks today uh, like Laura mentioned um, for $15 they're also on Amazon they're $17 on Amazon and they're all bariatric specific recipes they're not meant to have too many ingredients um, they're not bariatric serving sizes so that you know that's always a big question so all the recipes are four servings in one recipe because it's easier for people to cater it from there rather than if I say it's six bariatric size you're like what is that really so anyway so that's more about that I'll be here afterwards um, and can answer any other questions but thanks again for having me and I believe Laura is it time for smaller groups yeah all right thanks so much for